Okay, folks, listen, I'm glad you guys tuned in. I mean, you want to know how to set your grill up, how to clean it and get it ready, right? Now, with the fourth right amongst us, if you haven't already gotten yours together, I'm just going to show you guys just what you need to do to turn out some great tasting barbecue or grilled food, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is, listen, I got some Weber cleaner right here. I'll do, leave it right here so you guys can take a look at it. So as you can see, if you look at this, this right here is for exterior. You know what I mean? Uh, if you hadn't fired your grill up and it's the first time, you know what I mean? Or whenever you do, look, it's real, real, you know, dirty, got ash on it, stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean that up and then we're gonna work our way in the inside, right? Talk about getting it, you know, clean, getting it sterilized. And then we, I'm gonna show you guys the zones and you know, set that up for you. All right, so look, you guys can see, you know, sprayed it on, wiped it, got it looking, you know, brought it back to about 80% of the way it is, you know, the way it was when it was brand new, right? When you take care of your equipment, you know it'll last, you know, as long as it can. I can say this, look, I've had this uh, either five or almost six years. I know five for sure. And look at it right now. This was the anniversary edition, you know, the limited edition one, you know, red, this is right. But right now it's gonna represent every charcoal grill that's out there. Right, so now this is exterior. I don't spray anything on the inside or nothing like that. I want you guys to come on on here and look at it. This is the way I left it the last time I used it. I want you guys to take a look at the grate. You can see it have a little bit of char food on there. That being, you know, when you have the coals in here, it continues to cook. Anything that's stuck to the grates, you know, it just like that. It just becomes like charcoal almost itself, right? So I'm gonna show you how to get this clean. You're only gonna need yourself a brush. You're gonna need something like this. Now, I've heard a lot of different things. They say don't use the metal ones because the metal ones can, you know, fall, stick to the grate, get on your food, and then you can ingest them, right? So now everybody's being, you know, real conscious of that. So I got some hard bristle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the ash first. But when it comes time to clean the grate, I'm going to get this nice and hot. That way all I got to do is hit it, and everything flakes off. It cleans it up, and it sterilizes everything, right? Heat does the sterilization, folks. Nothing can get past that heat. All right, so this is what we're gonna do first, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take the grate off, right? I'm gonna take this off and just set this over here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is, I want you guys to come in here and look down this way. Maybe I'll take this one out too, just so you guys can see, All right? So I have a spin grate, that's what that's for. That means I can turn my grate and spin it, right? But I'm gonna take this out also because I wanna remove the bottom, right? And then I can give you guys a little bit of knowledge on how this works and what we're doing. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some knowledge right here, right? So look, first we're gonna come in here and we're gonna look at this. Look at all of the ash that's in, in the bottom of here, right? On the bottom, they got a vent. I use this vent like everybody else does. I'm talking like I'm doing something special, but I'm gonna use the vent, right? How I vent it. And it, just so you can see it while it has the ash in here now, look down here. You see that opening down there? That's the vent, right? And then this lever here, you see how I can open that? And then listen, air, come down here. You see how air comes in here? Air comes in, pulls this way, passes through the coals, heats the coals up. So what it does is stoke the coals. Same thing as if you were uh, blowing fire, blowing uh, air on a fire. You know how it like, just like, kind of like kicks up? That's what, how that works. And that's where you get your heat from, right? But for cleaning purposes, look at this. Back and forth. All the ash that I've been using, you know, that, that was in here that hadn't come down, I just keep doing this. Because what we want to do is we want to start, excuse me, we want to start so that we can uh, have a, a nice, clean, you know, surface to go ahead and start making some more ash. All right, so look, you come on down here without putting your hands on or nothing like that. This right here constitutes like a, a clean, you know, bottom part of your, you know, your kettle grill, right? Now, you guys might not have the same type of grill. What you want to do is you just want to make sure you remove all your ass. It's the start of a new season. You know what I mean? Uh, and we finna just go ahead and make it happen. Now, if you guys come around in here, let me show you something down here. All of the ass that you saw when I was moving it around with the vent to get it to drop, this is where it comes to, right? So for me, this is what I do. And you see that right there? That's all your ass. All right. So look, I just dump. I can take like a little paint spatula or something and, you know, knock that off or even stick my hand in there. It's not on there hard, but... This is mostly what everybody's gonna do. I'm just trying to keep it practical and real, folks. I could do the same thing when you guys come in here and look at this right here. 
this is when I took my hand and I just kind of like pushed it down. But I just wanted to show you. If I do that now, I don't have the bottom on, but this will knock all of that down. But being realistic, most people will probably do it like this. This is fine. Or if you want to, now that we empty here, I'm going to put this back on at the bottom. And then just to show you how easy it comes off. Look, I just got a glove on. I just hit it like this. All right? It comes off. Really don't need no paint spaster for this right here. All right, so we have that done, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead. This is the bottom, this is the bottom grate. This is the one that holds the charcoal, the charcoals, right? So we put that there and look, this is gonna be where the charcoals, you know, this is the level that it's at. Now here is where I put on, this is my ring, right? So this ring here goes here on the top. And see that hole right there? That's because I'm using a spin grate. Makes it a little bit easier for what I'm doing, but most people will just have a grate like that and you just put it on the top. Now I'll leave some information if you guys wanna get one of these, you know what I mean? So that you can just like spin it around. That way if you have food here and you got a zone, you can move it away and you know, blah, blah, blah. Right, but I'm gonna show you that also. First thing we're gonna learn is how to start, you know, the charcoal, right? I'm gonna show you guys the right way. Makes it much, much uh, easier. I hope everybody watching this, cause I've seen people using lighter fluid that's a file. So let me go ahead and get my chimney, my charcoals, and I'm gonna show you the key thing to make that work is I got some fire starters. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about this chimney. Look, it's self-explanatory. I'm gonna pour the chimney, I'm gonna pour the charcoals in the chimney, right? If you look at the bottom, it's got a little space. This is where air comes in at, right? So just imagine I had something right here, whatever that is you can imagine is right here. We put this over the top like that, and this will keep all of your coals concentrated in the one area and that flame from the bottom will heat this up and get them going, right? So real simple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some charcoal to it. And if you pay attention right here, look, this is Kingsford. This is the original. This gives it the flavor that everybody has grown to love, right? This right here is all I use. I don't like to use that matchless, all of that uh, fire, whatever that is that they have out there. This right here works, folks. Now, I'm gonna show you guys the part when I told you about a fire starter, right? So, these are a wax version of it. You know what I mean? Uh, usually you guys see me with the tumbleweeds, but however. So look, it coming like this. Just go ahead and pop one out. I like to use two so I can get a little bit of a burn. You know what I mean, get a longer burn. You want to get yourself a, a lighter and you light it. This is extremely flammable, right? So you see how it holds that flame, right? Nice and big. Now I just take this, I take my chimney, put this over the top, and notice how I put everything over towards the edge. That way my, this right here won't be in, inside and we can keep it cool as possible. But they put a deflector right here that you know deflects some of the heat coming from the body. You know what I mean, so your hand is protected. But we'll just wait. Once those are lit, then we move over to the next part. All right, so come on in here and take a look. I don't want the camera to get too close to it. I'm gonna tilt it. If you guys can see it, hopefully you do. You see that red down there? That's what you wanna see. I can see the light flame on the top. It's get ready to start turning to just the top ones gray. Now when they're gray folks, that's when they're ready. You know, they're producing the heat. I've seen people put them down there where they put lighter fluid on, they light it up, then when it goes away, they figuring out how come it won't start. You gotta get it started and a chimney is your, listen, that's your best friend. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this down. Put it down on the concrete. I'm gonna pull my grate off one more time, right? Now look, I'm gonna do something a little different than what I normally do. I'm getting ready to put build a mound of charcoal right there and I'm gonna pour the hot charcoals on top. Right, because I want this to get real hot. And when I put my grate back on, I want to be able to clean it and that sterilizes it and gets it ready for us to cook. So when I say build a mound, I mean just build a surface right there, just like you see, right? So now I'm gonna take the hot charcoal and I'm just gonna pour these right over the top. All right, so once I pour those over the top, I'll go ahead and put my top grate back on there and I verify that I have my vent, which on the Weber kettle grill, it's a vent like this. So I look at it, I look down at it, it's wide open because I want to have some heat. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my top on. Right, I'm going to open this up so that it'll draw. It draws from the bottom, passes over that, stokes it, gets it nice and hot, comes right out of that, right? Then when we come over here and look, 
you'll see the temperature starting to rise. Partially because it's right on top of the coals too. But I'm gonna explain all of that too in this video, so stay tuned. All right, so I just reached the temperature of 400 degrees, right? I wait a couple of seconds as it's rising through it. Reason being, I wanna make sure that my grate is hot. So now I take my brush and I just run this across like that. That knocked off all of the food from the last, you know, cook. Makes it easier so that when we put something on there now, we can take a pair of tongs, fold a piece of uh, paper towel, and then put a little oil on there, and you can put it on here. That's something I always forget over all these years. I always forget to do that, you know what I mean? But that'll stop your food from sticking on the grates. So when you're done, look at these grates here. This is ready to go. Now I'm gonna close these. I'm gonna close my lid and let it go for about another 15 minutes. And now, then after that, I'm gonna show you guys on how to set up your zones. All right, so now we're getting ready to set up zones, right? So we're gonna start with this one, the direct zone. But first, we wanna scoot all of our charcoal over to one side. All right, so now you guys starting to see it, right? Notice the charcoals, they white. This is what you wanna have when you cooking, right? So when I say we're gonna cook on the direct side, that's direct heat, folks. You guys can see that line. And then when we move things to the indirect side, it'll be on this side. Let me put this grate on there. Oh, but before I do that, let me show you guys something else. Come around this way. I want you guys to look down inside of the uh, grill. Remember we talked about the vents? This is how we gonna control the, the temperature. So it's not just about sweeping the ash into the bottom of the ashtray, right? It's about moving this around and closing this. Now, I know to keep it around 350, I know I use about, I use that much of a vent. Look at that right there. I want you guys to see it. Everyone's gonna be different, I got it, but I'm just letting you know, I know. And once you guys know, you'll know how to set it, right? It's radiating a lot of heat right now, so that's cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our grate back on top. I put the grate on here just so you guys can just see how I set up. Now, if I wanna put something over the top, say I wanna grill some carne asada or something like that, I put this over here, right? Or if I wanted to grill some chicken, after I got it cooked the way I want to, I can put it over here. If I'm looking to sear steak, I can put it on top of here, then move it to the indirect side to, you know, go ahead and continue to uh, cook it. But now you guys got to see direct, indirect. And let me do it this way, put the lines going the right way, All right? Let's see. So if I did it that way, maybe you guys can just take one of these on a grate and just see. Direct, indirect. Direct, indirect. All right? So just to give you an example, I'm going to go ahead and throw something on the uh, grill right now. Right? So if that's on direct, let's just say that was charring real fast, right? Then I wanted to bring it off of the fire. So I would bring it over here like this. And now it's on indirect. When you put the hood on, now it's becoming more like the oven, right? Still giving you the charcoal flavor and everything that's on the inside. That would do everything as far as cooking it and you reaching your, you know, your temp, right? But then when you want to get those lines and you want it to cook fast, this is what we call grilling, folks. We right on top of that heat. Now look, I hate to keep beating a dead horse, but I got to go back to these charcoals, right? Look at these coals down here. You can see what color they are. Now you know they're cooking. I don't know how many times I've seen people say that that is not, you know, lit and they start doing something else to it, trying to add fluid to it or just trying to figure it out. That's not burnt out. That's what you want. And that gets you that little bit of crispness, crispness on here like that. See how that split? That's that intense heat, right? So I'm gonna look at the bottom. Oh yeah, this is right. So now I could just put it over here if I wanna stop that, that intense heat cooking, you know, right? right? So remember, this is the direct zone. We directly over the fire over here is indirect. All right, so if you look at the vents down there, that's where I normally would have it, but I would probably have half of the coals inside of here, right? If I wanted to do something around 350. Now, because of that's, you know, that's a lot of coals in there. For the way that I normally cook, I'm gonna close this just a little bit more because we want to stop some of that air coming in there. That right there, slow it down. Now we're getting ready to put the lid on. And now that we have the zones, let me show you the bottom of this right here. That's the probe that gives us the temperature. If I put this probe over here on top of the coals, that's gonna give me a false reading. That's so hot radiating on top of there, that's gonna tell me that. So I like to bring it over here like this, just till I get my temperature right, right? So I put it over here like this. This immediately starts because that's a lot of uh, coals in there, like I said, so it's starting to pick up on the heat. Right? And the reason I'm going into detail, I don't care how long this video is, I want you guys to be successful when you go ahead and get on the grill. Now, when we look at the vent over here, we don't want to have full control, you know, full 
open, right? We want to have something like about a quarter like that. We want to slow it down. And it's going to take a minute. It's a charcoal grill. There's still a lot of heat in there. Right now, I'm passing through 300, working my way to 350. It's probably going to go to about 375 or 400. But we're going to let it settle. And then I'm going to show you how it looks. And then we'll continue on talking. Okay, I'm at 350 degrees, right? If you guys look right there, look, it took that. Let me just do it like this so you can see wide open. It took it to be almost closed. And you remember what I had in the beginning? For this amount of coals, look down there. I'm going to move this so you can see. You see that? It takes it a bit almost closed here just to slow down that heat. You want to slow down that air getting over it so it quits stoking it, right? Now, the vent was over here on this side, and I had a thermostat over here, right? This is so that I can get it as far away as possible from that so that I can get, you know, the closest I can to a true temp. So tell me, you know, if, if this is... If I explained it the right way, you know what I mean? I just want to make sure you guys have a clean grill to start. And best practices, practices would be to go ahead and clean your grill after you use it. Now, I say the start of the season, but look, I use my grill quite often. And I ain't going to lie to you, it look like that and I leave it like that. But I do clean it every time I use it. Now, if you guys got any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm going to say this, happy 4th. You know how I leave all of my videos. I'm out. Peace.